Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Some words from the 36th verse of the 18th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight, that I might not be handed over to the Jews. But my kingship is not from this world. Today we have come to the last Sunday in the church's year. The Sunday we observe as the feast of Christ the King, or the feast of the reign of Christ. It is the last of the glorious mysteries that we reflect upon in our rosary every Friday. And it has been enshrined here in our church in the rose window that you see at the top, where Jesus sits on the throne. As we sang in the hymn not long ago, he sits at God's right hand till all his foes submit. So reminder to us that the life of Christ was leading to a teleological end. That his humble birth and his servant leadership throughout his life was leading to his exaltation as king. And later on, his coming as judge of all the earth. And it really sets up for us the example or the, the wonderful image of what true leadership ought to be in this world. And quite interestingly, our reading for this morning from the Gospel lesson juxtaposes two types of leaders. We have the leadership of Pilate and the leadership of Jesus. And as has been the case from the dawn of time and from the beginning of Jesus' life, the leadership that is guided by power in this world that is guided by exercising authority over others, and sometimes unjustly so, does not fully understand the type of leadership that Jesus brings. And so from the very beginning of his life, we had this tussle with what type of leadership is, is really approved by God. At Jesus' birth, we have the humility of his birth where he is born at a stable in Bethlehem, and, but yet he is ministered to by the great kings of the earth. But juxtaposing that image, we have the image of Herod, who is all caught up with his worldly power and maintaining his position. And the interesting thing about Herod in that story is that Herod knows that his, his power is vulnerable. He knows that there's a vulnerability about him. But he doesn't know why he is vulnerable. And he's vulnerable because his power is based on fear. His power is based on ill-treating others so that others will see and fear him. And he knows that there can come a time when persons will decide, enough is enough. Give me liberty or give me death. Or as Harriet Tubman said, I know that I am entitled to two things in this world, death and freedom. And if I can't have one, I'll gladly take the other. People reach to that point in life. And when leadership is based on fear, they know that there's a vulnerability about them. And it comes out again later on in Jesus' life in the other Herod. Herod during the time of his preaching and teaching ministry, who is so fearful and so caught up with his position that in order to maintain power, he kills John the Baptist. And he's fearful of Jesus. And then we come to Jesus' trial, the passage we heard read today, the passage where Pilate is saying, don't you know that I have the power to crucify you or release you? And he probably thought that Jesus would shudder just like most people would if they were told that. But Jesus said, uh, you have no power over me. You have no power over me unless it's given to you by the Father. And then he asked Jesus, but are you, the real, are you, are you truly a king? Because kings don't really act like this. 
this is not the way true leaders act. You have to be tough. You have to prove that you have power. And Jesus said, that's how you all operate down here. But my kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my people will come and fight for me. But my kingship, this is not the type of leadership I exercise. And it's really an image for us in our leadership roles within the world. Because we've seen this played out so much in human history. We're seeing it being played out even in our time. Where persons think that worldly power and fear is the way to lead in this world. And our church is not devoid of this type of character. Henry VIII, who is attributed with the formation of the Anglican Church, was one who ruled by fear. Killed many of his wives, many of the people who helped him. He just killed them, executed them. One of note would have been Cardinal Wolsey. Cardinal Wolsey, who was Henry's right-hand man, and did just about everything for him. He was there making sure that Henry got everything he needed. Sometimes things that were not even in keeping with the will of God. Because Wolsey also had his eyes set on power. He wanted to become the Pope. And he thought by sticking close to the king and supporting him, when time came for his election, he will get the support he needed. But then there came a time when he couldn't help Henry. He couldn't bring about the change that Henry wanted, which was the divorce of his wife Catherine. And Henry turned on him. And we're told that when he was going to his trial, he died on the way to trial. And there was found a little memo that he wrote. And it simply said, had I served my king, my God, as faithfully as I served my king, he would not have abandoned my gray hairs. Had I served my God as faithfully as I served my king. Henry and Wolsey were all caught up with power here on earth. And securing power here on earth. And were willing to do anything necessary to secure that power. But our Lord's journey in this life that we've reflected upon during the past Christian year tells us that true power and true kingship and true authority lies first in humility. It lies first in self-abasement. It lies first in empathy, recognizing the commonality we share as human beings, willing to see where a person is in life and help to lift him or her up to where he or she ought to be. Not through fear, but through loving service. Not through fear, but through sacrificial love. That is where true leadership is found. On an international level, we see persons still exercising the type of leadership of Pilate and Herod and the others. Leadership that is built on fear and subjection and oppression and will do anything to their own people to maintain their power. It is there in all that we see around us. It is there in some of the nations we call great in this world. It is there in the leadership of groups like ISIS Everything is about fear. Everything is about destruction. And we have seen that before. The world knows what happens with that type of leadership. The world knows that that leadership is not where true authority lies. But we pursue it. In Germany, during the 1940s, when the Nazi movement was on the rise, Dr. Goebbels, who was really the mastermind behind it, 
had in mind a plan to make all Germany subject themselves to Adolf Hitler. He will create an image of Hitler that is such that persons will want to bow down to him. And he was very good. He was a very good propagandist. He was brilliant. Apparently, granted, misdirected, but he was very brilliant. And he went on a campaign. But part of this propagandist campaign included persons keeping a close eye on their neighbors, reporting anything that was outside the realm of what they considered to be right and orthodox in Germany. And then you ended up with a community that was based only on fear. Everyone was suspicious of the other person. And that is not true living. That is not true authority. That is not true leadership. The leadership that we are called to exercise in the world is the leadership that our Lord exercised. Where those who were far off were brought near. Where those who were pushed to the fringes of their society felt that they could come to him. And I particularly like that beautiful image of the woman who came to dinner while Jesus was sitting at the house of the Pharisee. This woman of the city. The woman who was considered corrupt and dirty and no one that anyone in high esteem should associate with. But because of Jesus' style of leadership, she felt comfortable. She felt, this is someone I could come to and feel validated. For those of us who are in positions of leadership, whether it be in the church, in our businesses, or whatever sphere of life we're in, do we exercise that type of leadership where persons feel, I can come to him or her? I can go there. He or she will listen to me. He or she will at least try to understand. I ask this question because I often hear what it takes to be a good leader in the society. You have to stamp your authority. You have to let people know that you're in charge. I even heard one person said, every now and again you have to go in and let go a few bad words so that they know. <laughs> they know that you're in charge. And they will fear you. And they'll do what you want. And then when persons lead by such means, they wonder why, why is there industrial action in my business? Because persons didn't feel they could come to you. There's one thing to control by fear. But as I said before, there'll come a time when persons have felt that, look, I have nothing left but my dignity. I have nothing left but my pride. I can't take this anymore. And they will utter that loud cry that has been uttered throughout the ages. Give me liberty or give me death. But I'm not taking this anymore. And they'll rebel. Because the type of leadership we exercise was one where they never felt that they could come and feel validated. They never felt they could come and be understood, or at least sought to be understood. They never felt that they could come and experience compassion. That is the type of leadership Jesus exercised. He exercised a leadership that brought persons to him. That made the indigent within the society feel comfortable around him. He fed the hungry. He cared for the poor. He stood up for their rights. He walked with them and he talked with them. And they felt that he was a part of them. And because of that, they were not afraid to go to Jerusalem and throw their clothes on the road and say, Hosanna to the King, the Son of David. 
they were not afraid there after even if he had been crucified to say we believe that this was the type of leader that could transform the world and we will give our lives to proclaim this type of leadership for that is what Christianity really is Christianity is proclaiming an ideal an ideal of the common bond we share as human beings an ideal to love our neighbors as we love ourselves no matter who that neighbor may be an ideal to go down into the mud and lift people from the mire of whatever state they may be in in this life to recognize themselves as children of God who, is, who are loved and cared for and cherished by him as we observe the feast of Christ the King this year I pray that we will just take some time during the course of this week before we begin the new year next Sunday to look again at the journey our Lord took the journey from his lowly birth his shameful death at Calvary to his exaltation as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that is the road we are being called to take in our lives as well and not just in our lives within the church because Christianity is a way of life and everything we do in this life is an act of worship to God ought to be an act of service to God and so we are really being called to exercise this servanthood and this servant leadership in every sphere of our lives it is a great obligation that is laid upon us but if we are to transform the world if we are to usher in this reign of peace that we believe will come when the world understands the way of Christ we are the ones who must do it in our time we must proclaim Christ and his servant leadership in our generation and the best way to proclaim is not only by word but by our actions how we treat to persons because remember the leadership we are called to exercise in this world is not of this world and this world doesn't understand it for this world is bent on pain and oppression and exercising forceful authority the leadership we are called to exercise is one of humility that draws persons to an understanding of self and an understanding of the presence of God in their lives let us go out and exercise that leadership in our daily living so that persons can become comfortable to live out their lives in the freedom with which God has created them and remember I leave you with some words from a great sage the sage Jesus Ben Sirach who wrote that book Ecclesiasticus he said how can dust and ashes be so proud when even in life their bowels decay how can dust and ashes be so proud when even in life their bowels decay? What he was really trying to say is all those persons who exercise their authority and are so forceful and so harsh with others that they have all this power. Tell them you'll die tomorrow and see how they behave. Tell them they're terminally ill and see what happens all of a sudden the attitude changes because then they recognize all the power I thought I had it's really nothing Jesus said to Pilate you have no power unless it's given you from above so let us exercise the type of authority that Jesus exercised the type of leadership the servant leadership that will guide us to that eternal place where we too will attain to heavenly joys and receive crowns of glory. 
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you sent your only begotten Son to this world to be the way, the truth, and the life for us. Let his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our paths, and help us to so follow it that it may lead us to eternal life, where we too may be exalted as kings and princes and princesses and queens in your kingdom. These things we ask for Christ's sake. Amen.